and ants confirm that they also fell ill with fever and night terrors for days after the event. The full story that happened out of sight, apparently involved a girl getting pregnant out of wedlock, and getting caught after doing a makeshift abortion. Her mother slapped her and she slapped back, to the recollection of one of the servants in that house, that's when a weird smell came into the house, and a small puppy with hollow eyes was seen in the living room. The animal made weird deep sounds instead of barks and when confronted by the servants after the mother told them to get it out of sight, it started to grow and its fur busted into green flames. This is where the accounts from people outside of my family that lived in San Cristobal get weird, either the daughter and mother faint here and get dragged to safety by an employee, or they try to run away only to find get away. The beast supposedly just growls and stares as it keeps getting bigger and blazes from red to blue, the screams then prop people to call for help and get the priest close while some people grab their guns and try to get into the property. This is about the time my granddad gets told to come there armed. According to what my grandma and my grand aunts tell me, there were about 20 men, and a lot of armed servants there including my grand grandpa and my two grand uncles. The beast was holed up inside and already grew to the size of a Clydesdale, the mother and daughter stopped screaming, and that's when the town wielder used his hammer to break some fencing in the left side of the property, everyone I have talked about this confirms the left side was the one used to enter, it is told the women. And servants were catatonic already and the beast kept making deep weird growls, before the men started shooting at it, they pierced it and some of its skin fell and went caustic, spilling on the floor. The beast was reportedly unflinching until the priest started praying, and the animal recoiled in what I was told to be almost human voices. The animal tried to charge but some of the priest helpers dropped some holy water out of shock and the animal bounced back, the more the priest screamed prayers the more the animal seemed to be in pain, the men then started shooting at it again which prompted it to flee from the northern gate after all the doors in the property unlocked at the same time. Some onlookers outside of the property said the animal kept growing. People chased it out first to the north, then to San Lucidrio riverbank where it flinched at the church projected shadow, and was forced west down the river where it fell to the shots, and reportedly started dissolving into a weird mass of flesh and fire until there was nothing left. I should visit that place, there is a plot of land where the animal supposedly died and grass refuses to grow to this day. It's apparently a tourist site for some people that hear the tales, the scary part of this shit is the amount of people that don't change the story, most folk tales always get a variation but this shit always got the old locals unnerved. A girl on a Navajo reservation recounted a strange event from her childhood. Very young, around 10 or so. My parents have to go out of town with my aunt, uncle, and grandmother. They say they'll be back the next day and leave us kids to look out for ourselves while they're gone. We spend the afternoon playing outside, doing normal kid stuff. Only go inside once it gets dark. Everyone's hanging out in the living room, when suddenly there's a knock at the door. Front door has a large window on it. And I can see someone standing out there in the porch light. It's not a person. Looks like a wolf standing up on its hind legs, but it's much taller than the door maybe 8 feet tall or so. His breath is fogging up the window. Scared. I usher all the younger kids into the two bedrooms and tell them to stay away from the windows. Run back to the living room but the wolf thing is gone. Hear movement on the roof, sounds like horse hooves clopping around up there. Scared, but trying to stay calm, I build a fire in the chimney in case it's trying to get in through there. After about an hour, I go back to check on the kids. In one room they're all fast asleep go to check the other room but I hear something in the living room. Go out there and see one of my little cousins and she's whimpering, looking at the door. The wolf thing is back, and it's staring at my little cousin. Its eyes are glowing red. I run over and try to pull my cousin away from the door but she seems paralyzed. 
Her eyes look glazed over and I realize she's looking into the wolf creature's eyes. I shake her a bit, calling her name, but she won't snap out of it. I tell her to remember her family and shake her harder and eventually she kind of wakes up and starts crying. Says the creature was talking to her in her head. What was it saying? It was telling her to open the door and let it in. As she's talking she glances over at the door and I see her eyes glaze over again. I realize the creature must be hypnotizing her, or something. Keeping my eyes averted from the door, I shake my cousin again calling her name and talking to her until she finally snaps out of it. Then the wolf creature starts scratching at the door and pounding on the window. It could easily break that window but for some reason it won't. I walk my crying cousin over to her room and tell her to try and sleep, and to stay away from the windows. The wolf creature keeps scratching at the door, sometimes it climbs on the roof. I keep the fire burning all night and make sure to never look directly into the wolf's eyes. This goes on until morning. Just as light is breaking, the creature takes off into the woods like it's scared. Grandmother and parents come back later in the day but we don't mention what happened, I didn't think they'd believe us. It was later in the day when some of us girls were sitting in the living room that I noticed my grandmother staring at us with a strange grin on her face. My cousin noticed it too, said it felt evil. She kept grinning and staring at us with a dark look in her eyes. For some reason I think that my grandmother had something to do with that creature. Alright this one happened this past spring semester. Two buddies and I decide to drive from northern slash central Florida down to Key West for the weekend. Shit's nice, longish drive but it's okay. Spend weekend in Key West doing shit like fishing and chillin' at the beach, weekend ends. On drive back up. We're taking turns driving, friend one is tired as shit but took the first shift anyways. I take over driving when it gets dark. Friend 1 hops in back to catch some sleep while friend 2 stays in passenger seat. Driving for a few hours at night and decide to pull over for some gas and food at a shitty, poorly light gas station. Ask sleepy friend 1 if he wants anything. No response, passed the fuck out. JPEG. The car, sport. Get snacks. Fuck yes peach rings and an Arnold Palmer. Notice some dick put nails under my tires so that when I drove off it'd go into my tires. The fuck? Cashier didn't see shit, neither did we, place is light like shit anyways. Remove it, bail. Head off back on the road. And five minutes or so later remember friend one is in back when he catches my eye in the rear view. Look back in rear view on see friend one put on his hoodie he had in the back with him, closed up the hood part and moved over to the right side. So much for being asleep, moving around and shit, the hell you think this is? Ask if he saw anyone fuck with the car. He doesn't talk, he just nods, no. Make snide comment about sleeping beauty, should have came with us inside and got some deodorant he smells like shit fucking got him. We all smelled, we didn't shower that day after fishing. Driving down sketchy as hell road with woods on both sides a few minutes, really dark now. See someone standing in the road, move bitch. Betamax. Friend one leans forward a little, awake now bitch. Swerve out of the way of them, they don't move. Suddenly I can see people in the fricking trees and foliage on both sides, like a goddamn ambush. Who oh, fuck the hills have eyes. Fucking gun it. Thank god I spotted the nails under the tires. Couldn't make out any of their faces, just their shapes, too dark for my shitty headlights. Hour or so goes by, friend two and I both freaking the fuck out with only a few words spoken between each other, friend one back asleep not talking. We see another car drive by not long later, their lights on. As they pass, I look in my side mirror. Passing car shines through my side windows as it goes, 
in the side mirror I see friend one's face asleep up against the window on my left side directly behind me. Weren't you? Look in rear view, see he's still in the hoodie in the right seat. No. Slam on brakes, start screaming, friend 2, WTF what what, then he looks back and makes the realization there's two people now in the back seat. Real friend 1 is actually finally awake now dazed and confused. Hod figure slams open the car door and sprints off into the woods. Hit the gas, all three of us screaming incoherently at each other what the fuck what the fuck. Friend 1 says he woke up when we were at the gas station right after friend 2 got in the back with me and put on my hoodie, next to me while you were still in the gas station. Someone had been in our car for the past one to two hours that we didn't know. I never saw bro's hoodie ever again. We talk about how we almost got trapped and eaten by cannibals in Central Florida all the time, try to make it into a joke. The humor helps, but that shit wasn't funny. I told this story in a thread I posted yesterday, but I'll post it again. Before I post my personal story, I need to fill you in on the legend. So strap yourselves in slash x slash, this is the legend of the lost lights. Chapter 1 Part 1, The Mountain It all starts off in the mid 1800s. An expeditionary force of 25 men go exploring in the mountain ranges of BC, looking for suitable places to start a mine. They hike up a mountain and camp there for the night. That night when one of them gets up to go relieve their bowels and trips and hurts their leg in the dark. In the morning it is decided that 12 men will help the injured man down the mountain and back to civilization while the rest of them, 12, continue on ahead. So the group splits up. They hiked until the evening. One of the men noticed it had gotten considerably colder. It then started to snow slightly only minutes later. He expressed his concern that they might get snowed over in the night. The others laughed it off. They joked and teased about him being scared. Part 2, The Storm As the evening turned into twilight, it got colder and colder, the snow got heavier and heavier. They had gone a ways up the mountain so it was a difficult and deadly situation if the storm got worse. The snow showed signs of not letting up, in fact, it was surly to become a monster storm. The twelve men faced a tough situation. They needed to get back down the mountain, or else they would freeze to death. They left their tents and took what was needed. They started back down the mountain in the raging storm. They each lit their oil lamps as they headed down. Because of the blizzard that ensued, they could hardly see the light of the man in front of them. The man who had noted the snow earlier, Jacob White, had lost sight of the lanterns, in fact, all of them seemed to have. They walked around aimlessly on the mountain, calling out, trying to find each other. Just when it couldn't get any worse, the wind became even stronger. Jacob knew he had to get down the mountain or he would die there. He stopped trying to find the others and went with the slope, slowly making his way down. He managed to get down the slope and to the base. Part 3, The Lights Jacob ran to find the 13 men that were headed back. To get help in rescue.